Welcome to the final game of the day in Dallas. Big D and it matches North Carolina State against Texas. The ACC against the Big 12. The number 10 seed in the Atlanta region against the number two seed. The winner of this game will take on West Virginia in the Sweet 16. We look at today's starting lineups and first for the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. The front court of Simmons and Eftimov, three guards at Sewer, Bennerman and Bethel, and for Texas. They will counter with P.J. Tucker, Brad Buckman, and LaMarcus Aldridge, and the guard line of Daniel Gibson and Kitten Paulino. The head coach of the Longhorns in his eighth season is Rick Barnes. His career record in tournament play, 12 and 13, and his counterpart today is Herb Sendick in his 13th season with the Wolfpack of NC State. Well, this is going to be another one of those games where pace is involved. NC State, their calling card, the three-point shot, quality shots, Texas more athletic. Texas just comes off their victory over Penn, where it was like going to the dentist. Inside and quickly, North Carolina State on the board, Betterman. The senior from Greensboro, North Carolina, who had an 18-point performance in their win against Cal in round one on Friday. And made a critical three in that game. Look for Texas to go inside to Aldridge and Tucker. They were double-doubles in their win over Penn. Tucker drives baseline off the glass. And a battle for the rebound underneath. And they're going to say jump ball. And possession arrow will point to North Carolina State. Notice no names on the uniform backs of NC State. Their theme, one heartbeat. And you can tell by their balanced scoring how unselfish a team the Wolfpack is. Now the ball went to Texas. And the drive is Gibson. There's Buckman. Had a good look baseline. The shot clock horn went off. Here comes the Wolfpack. Tucker around and out. That was a long three attempt by Bethel. Texas in a slow down game against Penn. Bob on Friday won that one 60 to 52. And they come back and hit a three. Gibson from way outside. And they are halfway to their three point production in the entire game against Penn. They only made two. Fast pace Texas wants. And for the 510th consecutive game, Texas with a three point field goal. Wolfpack, an excellent ball handling team, not a good rebounding team. Three point shooting has been an A all year. Left them in their last four games coming into the tournament. The back door. Simmons nicely done as he feeds Eftimov. Herb Sendek does not like you to say Princeton offense, but it sure looked good there. One turnover to the other. And another touch, but it's brought in by Aldridge. North Carolina State 22-9 from the ACC Texas with 28 wins and six defeats from the Big 12. Texas lost in the conference finals to Kansas. Paulino and the threes are dropping. Gibson has one and Paulino hit. NC State came limping into the tournament, losing four in a row, but they are looking confident in this game. Buckman with the rebound off the miss. Gibson trying to push tempo. Runs into a wall of red. Paulino, same spot. This time it wouldn't go. How about that rebound as Bethel stretches out for the Wolfpack. Goes coast to coast, high off the glass, won't go. It's tipped and controlled by Paulino. Credit Aldridge with that shot. Made Bethel change it. Aldridge off his hand, and it'll be Wolfpack basketball. Interesting matchups in the post in this game. Aldridge, the taller player, being guarded by the smaller Eftimov, and Tucker at 6'5", being guarded by Simmons at 6'10". On the low block, Simmons drives it back in on Buckman. Turns off the window, no. Aldridge the rebound. Keep your eye on Aldridge. He can jump out of the gym. Fetterman now on Tucker. Buckman. Tucker has a strength advantage on this, Craig. Big fella, jump hook, got it. Oh, Buckman, he had, you watch that, that ball came out of his big paw. He brought it back in and hit the jump hook. 
That's the first two-point bucket for Texas <laughs> after hitting back-to-back -back three balls. 16, 30 to play in the half. Every lead playing like this. When they played Penn the other night, they had to play defense for 35 seconds. Threw their offense off. Only scored 60 points in that win. Tough shot. They kick it out. From the corner. And a whistle from behind the arc. And three shots coming. Well, the three-point shooting of Texas was absent two nights ago, but today they start off hot from the perimeter. Gibson and Paulino knocking those two in. That is a formula for success for this team because Tucker and Aldridge very strong in the paint as well as Buckner. That's why Texas is a two-seed. Bitterman, an 85% free-throw shooter, short on his first attempt. And that foul was whistled on P.J. Tucker, his first and the first team foul for the Longhorns. Bitterman, the most athletic of the Wolf Pack. Boys missed the first two, one more coming. Foul in the corner, extremely uncharacteristic. Mike Williams will come in, and out goes Buckman. I don't know if that rainstorm that's affecting uh, Dallas is affecting Cameron Benjamin's free throw shooting. Very unusual for him to miss two in a row. 86% on the year. Makes one of three. So three points for Benjamin to start this game. It's eight to five, Texas. P.J. Tucker would like to post Benjamin. Incidentally, the star player, the player of the year with the ball right there from Raleigh, North Carolina, the home of the Wolfpack. He's a tough customer. He wants the full 40 minutes in round one against Penn. Eight on the shot clock. Aldridge faces up, contact whistle. And that will be on Simmons, his first. And a timeout, Texas early, leading North Carolina State by three. Greg Clark and Seth in New York with this quick update for you. We take you to Dallas where North Carolina State, which knocked off a number two seed UConn to reach a Sweet 16 last year, trying to do the same this year against second seed Texas. Well, they are in a similar matchup because Texas has such a strong front line for North Carolina State to have a chance. They've got to execute, have a low turnover game, and knock down three-point shots. Yeah, good sign so far for Texas. Daniel Gibson and Kenton Paulino each have a three-pointer. They made two threes the entire game when they edged by Penn. Clark mentioned the advantage they're going to have up front. If those guys can knock down threes, it could be a long night for NC State. Uh, let's ask you if the Wolfpack has the firepower to hang with Texas. Well, again, uh, Clark mentioned their three-point shot. The problem with NC State, if they're not making threes, they don't have much of a plan B, and Texas has those big guys up front, and that guy right there, P.J. Tucker's their identity guy. And another important element for North Carolina State is the way they play, they need to make sure they stay pretty close. They can't get behind by a big margin, because then it would force them out of what they like to do which is spread the floor, try to create mismatches with big guys trying to defend small guys away from the goal so they can penetrate and pitch out for those three-point shots. Early in the game, and Texas with now a 10-5 lead as they come up on 15 and a half minutes to play in the first half. The winner of this game will take on West Virginia. A winner just a little bit ago over Northwestern State. It's going to be interesting to see, Clark, how NC State handles the physical nature of Texas's defense. Not a lot of teams in the ACC, not a lot of teams in the country have that kind of size, athleticism, and muscle, and that's Andrew Brackman trying to take it to Marcus Aldridge back to stake. We'll keep track of that game for you. Let's get you back to Dayton, Ohio. Georgetown and Ohio State, Gus Johnson and Len Elmer. now this Hoya defense has been terrific early on Foster D boy that sound is a collective sigh of relief by the Buckeye faithful Jaquel Foster in a horrendous slump oh, starting to show signs of life 813 to play first time Hoyas with a 2013 lead and up whistle and a traveling a turnover well, so far, Herb Sendek's team struggling at the offensive end. 
Rick Barnes doing a good job of changing up his defenses, trying to cause some confusion. Turnovers tied up at two apiece from the corner, and another three. Boy, it's raining in Dallas. It's raining threes inside. Fetterman goes over the top. Can't do it. Bottom. Greg Dumble in New York, Georgetown leading Ohio State 20 to 13. We'll keep eyes on that one for you. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, the last game of this second round is getting ready to tip. Eighth seed Arizona, top seed Villanova. Let's take you there and join Jim Nance and Billy Packer. A matchup of Wildcats. The cat fight in Philadelphia coming up with the winner advancing to the regional in Minneapolis to take on Boston College next Friday night. Villanova and Arizona straight ahead here on CBS. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, welcome back, friends. And, well, Billy, we saw Arizona, perhaps its best performance of the entire season on Friday, knocking out Wisconsin. Villanova won over Monmouth. What do you expect out of these two today? Well, Lute Olsen is the man that said it, Jim, and he knows his ball club. He said that's the best all-around game his team has played all year long. They looked excellent, and, of course, for Villanova, it was a struggle, but they've got a crowd with them here today. They do. They also have a whole lot of talent, including Alan Ray, who was back after that eye injury suffered a week earlier at the Big East Tournament, had 19. Hassan Adams had been out of the Pac-10 tournament, serving a suspension, and he lit it up in the second half to put away the Badgers. It'll be a tough matchup. Here are the lineups. There's the traditional team that Arizona puts on the floor with a center, a power forward, a wingman, two guards, a big guard and a small guard, and then you have this Villanova team that is just so unusual with the four guards and, and a forward. Not so traditional. No, not at all. This game brought to you on HDTV by Harris Corporation, world leader in broadcast systems for high-definition television and mobile media. John Cowell, Antonio Petty, Donnie Gray governing the play here at the Wachovia Center with Sheridan in white for Villanova, Adams of Arizona jumping, and it's controlled to Walters. There's an interesting situation. The fourth tallest guy on the team jumps center. And a reach-in call against Adams, and this is one guy that they can't afford to get into the early foul trouble. He did against Wisconsin, in fact, on Friday, but the team had had this great burst at the start, 8 nothing, and Jim, there was a center jump back in 1957. Wilt Chamberlain, a Philadelphia product against North Carolina. They sent the smallest guy, Tommy Kearns, to jump against him. That wasn't quite the same thing, but it takes you back. Well, there's the other guy we spotlighted at the top. Alan Ray with the jumper. So three number ones have already advanced to the regional. The last to play in the second round is right here, Villanova. Mustafa Shakur off on the drive and loose ball is going to belong to Villanova. Can't say Wildcats today because they're all Wildcats. So Villanova to inbound. Mustafa Shakur missed on that drive and he is a Philadelphia product and has enjoyed hosting his Arizona teammates this week in his city. Now he and Lowry, good buddies for a long time playing against each other. And then he felt that uh, Shakur was a traitor when he left Philadelphia. And there's the hit. Nardi, who has been having all kinds of problems, off to a good start. Nardi with the three, and it's 5 nothing Wildcats. Full court pressure. Look at the quickness on this floor. Arizona with its win on Friday, picked up its 20th win of the year. One at 94-75, never trailed, shot 59% best of the season. And there's a freshman hitting the first basket for Arizona, Marcus Williams. Had a sensational ball game against Wisconsin, 10.7 rebounds, two assists, two blocks, three steals. All Pac-10 freshman player, one of the top newcomers into college basketball this year. Villanova. Defeating Monmouth University of uh, the Jersey Shore area about 90 miles away. Beat them on Friday, 58-45, giving them a 26 win of the year, tying the school record. Ray to the corner to Foy, his running mate, and another three for Villanova. Well, Foy is being guarded by Radinovich, who's going to have a hard time staying up 
with him because of that quickness and the ability to go so far out. Vodinovich used to be playing down in the paint. He can't afford to lose sight. So hot hand early for Villanova, which has struggled shooting the last couple of games, putting 31% in the win. That's Adams off. And Williams, well, they say Nardi touched it last. Lou Olson at 71, just recently, Billy signed an extension through 2011, Hall of Fame coach of Arizona. Well, he's taken two teams to Final Fours, to Kiowa there in 1980. And of course, has been just unbelievable. You know, Jim, since he went to Arizona, there have been 40 coaches at the other Pac-10 schools. Lou Olson, the one man in Arizona. Still there, and on the hook for at least another five. Shakur. Second good drive missed yeah. on the first one. He had quite a game in that performance over Wisconsin. 17 points, nine assists, five rebounds, couple steals, doing it all. Driving past Adams. It's Foy and Adams having to back off a little bit. He had that early foul call. Tips it over to Radinovich and Nardi just all over it and forces. The ball back to Villanova. That Ray underneath. Yeah. <laughs> just looking for trouble. Uh, Poor kid. And remember the other night when that ball was bounced back into his face and we were so worried about him. Look at him. He doesn't worry about anything. There he goes right underneath. I tell you, this is the toughest group of players you're going to see. This Villanova bunch. This Villanova bunch that just hit its first four shots, including a couple of threes. They've got Dante Cunningham, number 33, on the floor now. That's the first miss, Ray Short on the three. Adams, he likes that shot, the pull up just inside the three-point line. He was hot with it the other night. Ray, floater, short, Shakur, looking down court. Arizona likes this free-flowing game because Shakur is so good in the open court, much like we saw Marcus Williams in the first game. And here is Marcus Williams of Arizona, not to be confused. Right. Surprised that he missed that one. Look at Lowry, he'll take it inside. Ray off, he was short with the previous one, long this time. You better have some windpipes for this game, as these teams are flying up and down the floor. <laughs> it is. There's Jay Wright. Big East Coach of the Year in his fifth season back at Villanova was an assistant for Roley Massimino. He grew up just outside of the Villanova area about some 15 minutes away. Council Rock High School, played at Bucknell. But he's a Villanova man and uh, after a successful run as the head coach at Hofstra came back five years ago. There's Radinovich, fouled by Lowry. You're right, Billy, this is a sprint here. And some real quickness on the floor on both sides. Both sides. 10-4, Villanova will table it for a moment with this break. Cook has been terrific with 11 points. Hibbert, a presence on the floor for Georgetown. He has nine. In the corner, Green passed up the three. Cook. Saved from going out of bounds by Foster. But guys can get even closer. Sylvester. Baseline jump shot. No. Wallace, three on two. Owens. Got it. But Darrell Owens is the acknowledged sixth man in that team. Shoots almost 40% from beyond the arc. And he's very versatile, plays defense, but in transition, you can expect him to pull up anytime you see an open look. 27-19. Boyers have led by as many as 10. Dials. Nice. Big thing I like about that, Gus, is Dials is still on the move. He's not stationary where the defenses can help out. He's setting screens. He's rolling. He's coming across the lane. Makes it very difficult for the defense to catch up with him. Allows Ohio State to set up that 2-3 zone. Under four to go. A seven versus a two. The winner advances to Minneapolis. Great catch. Hammer block! Sellinger! Boy, did he get up! Inside! Sylvester banks it home. Well, we had a chance to see 
probably the only time in this tournament in two games that Roy Hibbert didn't bring it when he went to the rim and he paid for it. 27-23. Terrific job by Sullinger on the weak side. Inside, green, jump hook, got it. As he goes right over Matt Sylvester. Boy, what a luxury, not only to have a guy like Roy Hibbert on one low block, but to have a versatile guy like Jeff Green who can play the high post as well as the low block as a secondary low post scorer. Jeff Green only a sophomore from Hyattsville, Maryland. He has six points, and he's 6'9". Sylvester stripped. Oh, and we'll head the other way. But watch J.J. Sullinger, seven-footer, not today. As you can see, the difference in the three-point shooting. Tucker and Aldridge only played 17 games, Craig. They were out for the rest of the season, one for academics and one for a hip problem. Tucker, the academics, and Aldridge, the hip. And that had Texas suffering, but they are full strength this season. And it shows. And North Carolina State with the possession. How about the field goal so far in this game? The Wolfpack, 5 of 12. Texas from behind the arc, 5 of 7. <laughs> You're going to win a lot of games if you could keep that going. This has been the end that's been a struggle for the Wolfpack. Simmons strong in the lane. A little bump by Buckman. Left hook. Jump. Got it. Pretty good move right there with a thumb that has been injured during the ACC tournament. If you don't double a postman, and he's got a lot of space to maneuver, you can give a guy two dribbles. Most guys are going to get to the line or score, in this case, both. Minnerman will check back in for Herb Sindic. And now goes Andrew Brackman. And a three-point try for Cedric Simmons, a 68% shooter from the line. He'll eye it. And jumps off the rim. He's only a sophomore. Remember last year, the pack had Julius Hodge, their great player. They beat a two in the second round. They beat Connecticut as a 10. They're also a 10 this year, playing Texas a two. So far, things aren't going as well. Well, there's only one 10 seed left in this tourney, and they're on the floor right now. As that was easy. That's about a five-footer. So that all five, strength. all five Longhorn starters now on the board. 25-13 Texas. Halfway through, more than halfway through the first half. And another turnover will be Texas basketball with 9.16 to go. Tucker, strength, flexibility. And a great, great player, the player of the year in the league, Cedric Simmons, takes a seat. And Tucker will smell that and try to go into the paint. They send in a freshman, Ben McCauley. 1-3-1, one, one, half-court zone right here. This is designed to spread the floor out, change the momentum of the shooting. Jump shots should be available in the corners. A.J. Abrams also on the floor for Texas as Tucker. Finds the handle in the corner. Polino forces inside. Williams on a pivot. And the freshman Abrams now gives it off to Polino. Too strong off the back of the iron. How about that rebound? I'm talking he jumped off a, off a tramp. <laughs> Gavin Grant went up high. He's giving him the spark. Jump hook in the lane. No rebound and the tip out from the corner. Good luck, but it wouldn't fall. Texas so far, more offensive weapons than NC State. Aldridge pops out as we head to the eight-minute mark of half number one. Bounce pass, corner, on the dribble, the drive, inside. Tucker with the one-hander. Nice pass by Abrams. Tucker knows how to move without the ball. Texas very well prepared against the 1-3-1. The lead is 14. <laughs> Bethel needs to get the motor started. He'll hand it back out at Sewer with a dribble to drive. Lost it, picked up. NC State ranked as high as 14th in the country this season. They tailed off near the end of the year. People adjusted to their style of play, and they started missing threes. Baseline is shut down. Pickens 
And he knocks it out of bounds with one on the shot clock. One left on the shot. That's what the Wolfpack will have when we come back to Dallas. Tomorrow, Dave's all new with Denzel Washington. And later on this week, don't miss Sean Diddy Combs and Daytona 500 winner Jimmy Johnson. Led last possession by Ohio State. Pretty good. They got Dials, a 12 footer. He can normally knock down. But much better ball movement against the Georgetown defense, and you start giving Terrence Dials some looks. Back door Owens. Wow. They've always thought, Lenny, what would it be like if the Princeton offense was run by an athletic team? Well, Here's a perfect have. example. That's what you have right here. And they just knock you out with the intelligence, how they read the D so well. Dials pushed from behind. And again, they just use the aggression of the defenders against them. Take a look right here. Just bring it back outside. Just a little back door. Caught Sylvester sleeping on the job. And you can't sleep on Georgetown. Inside ball batted around and tipped in. Sullinger. And J.J. Sullinger at 6'5", undersized power forward. He's more of a power player than Sylvester right now. Doing a nice job of sneaking in on the offensive glass. Sap. Deep in the corner, Owens, and he hits. Georgetown shooting. 16 of 29 from the field. Make that 17 of 30 now. And Thad Mata has to talk it over. 20 seconds to go in the first half. Georgetown up big. Pass. Instead of keeping the ball high above his head, he dropped it down his waistline, got low, stepped right through the two defenders, made the play. Talking about Allen Ray, Ray Allen, Marcus Williams, Marcus Williams, and someone in his family even said, you know, you might, as a freshman, you might want to, this kid at UConn's pretty good, but you want to consider maybe changing your first name? And uh, he didn't take too kindly to that. He didn't like that idea. He wants to make a name for himself out of the Marcus Williams. And, now here they were both at the same site the first well they're week coast to the coast time. though you know yeah, you got a guy in Arizona and a guy in Connecticut I would assume that they have a good following both ends gets a both styled offense well they certainly do but defensively first of all you look at what they're all about they only allow 59 points a game Again, because they really focus on helping each other, and they got the shot blockers on the back line. Sylvester, three, blocked by Green, and that'll be the end of the first half. 38-25, Hoyas with the lead at halftime. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel with singular at the half after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports on our 25th Road to the Final Four. seniors now just think uh, when he was a freshman this is the kind of points he put up 24 points 15 rebounds against Marquette I mean he was destined at that point as a to freshman to, yeah, be yep. one of the premier big men to come into the, the Big East he missed the last seven games of that year with the knee surgery and that just started broken left hands double knee surgeries but right now he's getting the best he can out of some legs that are very difficult from the standpoint of support, particularly in games that are this quick. Very fragile. Seven surgeries in all for Frazier. Senior from Amityville, New York. Shakur back out. Dylan doesn't even come back down with it before he gives it back up to Williams. And the freshman's having a good go of it early. Now with seven. He really is. He's shown he can shoot the jump shot. He can power move inside. And that was a nice floater. Again, another one of those products out of Seattle that's been turning out so many good players. Opening for four. But no basket. Hey, Dylan is much like the Philadelphia players. He is tough. He's going right into the traffic. Getting his hands on a lot of balls. Lowry's been quiet so far. Here he is with the ball. 
over to Foy. Oh, that time, pure from three. Absolute pureness. He's got eight. Inside to Dillon. It's a hold of that wayward pass and reach around steal by Ray. Not a quick enough pass. But they can post up Adams inside. Boy, how is it ready to come get that ball? If you think that those guys can work on a wavelength, they've been playing so many games together. No one. Boy, right here out of Newark, New Jersey. And you know, just remember, Foy was told, to come get the ball from me. And that time he gets stuck with it for too long. Foy has eight for Villanova, which leads at this break with 11. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. Welcome once again to our studios here in New York for Singular at the Half, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis at halftime. Georgetown leading Ohio State 38 to 25. We're keeping the resuscitator close by for the big buck out of here. What's <laughs> going the on with this game? Well, there's just too much size and athleticism for the Georgetown Hoyas. Looking at this matchup, you knew it was going to be tough for the Buckeyes. They've got to get dials more established inside, but more importantly, they've got to figure out a way to stop Georgetown offensively and do a good job making threes. Yeah, I'm very impressed with the way Georgetown is yes. handling Ohio State zone. Uh, the Buckeyes haven't played a lot of zone. Thad Mata is obviously a brilliant tactician, but what can you do about Roy Hibbert? Here's a guy who's seven foot two and he's showing you some offense. There just aren't a lot of and, players and like lot, that in college basketball And anymore. a lot of their offense is similar to what they run against man. It's all predicated on those two big guys, Jeff Green and Roy Hibbert, being able not only to score inside, but they're both excellent passers so they can interchange those guys and still have big matchup advantage. He's an optimist. He feels it. You feel <laughs> Don't you? It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. He's an optimist. All right, guys. Meanwhile, North Carolina State and Texas are doing battle in Dallas. Seth. Been a good one, Greg. We're going to start off with Kent Paulino for Texas, knocking down the three that put the Longhorns up eight early. Daniel Gibson, the talented sophomore guard, a three of his own. That put him up by 11. And then A.J. Abrams. You know, if you want an assist and you play for Texas, that's what I do. LaMarcus Aldridge for the dunk. 18-5 at that point, but give NC State credit. They're coming back. Cameron Betterman drives, misses a layup. Cedric Simmons there for the foul. That cut the Longhorns lead to 11. And then Gibson again for three. Put them up by 12. But NC State so far hanging in. And this is the game that uh, we're talking about. Texas 29-22. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, the Villanova Wildcats leading the Arizona Wildcats. 17-14 is the score as they come up on 11 minutes to play. Let's take you live to Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Here's Arizona in the red, almost having it stolen, but the foul on Nardi, and that'll be two on Nardi of Villanova. As I was saying, when you look at this Arizona team, they're kind of amazing. They shoot less percentage from three than their opponents. They shoot less percentage from the floor than their opponents. They're getting out rebounded by their opponents, and where they make it up is on the defensive end of the floor with steals. But you look at those stats and you say, how is this ball club staying with a team that has never been out of the top 10 all year? Well, Villanova's led in this game by as many as six. But Arizona's come back to tie it a couple of times. And that's a 10-second violation. John Cal right here all over it. Really nice pickup by Villanova in that full court trap. Look down at the shot clock and see it down to 24, and thus the call. And Allen Ray to inbound. Rogers in the ball game now, an excellent defender against the dribbler. Lowry's got him. He'll feel that pressure. Rogers, as you said, Billy, outstanding defender. Foy gets three underneath. Sheridan was there for the putback, but a foul first, and it's going against Rogers. 22 consecutive tournament appearances, longest streak in college basketball, active streak. 27, the all-time record held by uh, Dean Smith, but 22 in a row. Boy, that is some consistency. You talk about how they're hanging in there with a team that was ranked in the top eight all season long. They struggle, talking about Arizona, against ranked opponents during the year. They played eight games against ranked teams and won only once, one and seven. You know, a real parallel between these two teams, Jim. You remember 
The last two games that Villanova played on the way to Raleigh's championship, they lost. In Arizona, the last two games they played on the run to Luke's championship, they lost. So yeah, everybody talks about momentum going into the tournament. Both teams were negative. And then came on and won a national championship. Boy reached in. It looked like there might have been contact, but the steal was forced. Lowry with the kick out. Ray, who can really shoot it. Hits the three. That's their offense. Four guards that can penetrate. Four guards that can stand out and go ahead and make that jumper. Lowry reached in. They got by him. Marcus Williams. After the shot. Yeah, he'll shoot three. I don't know if his foot was on the line or not, but I think it was behind it. I think it was, too. So you talk about all that momentum going into the tournament. Or lack of momentum. We, we saw the teams that had the momentum. Clearly a three attempt. Yep. Yeah, the, the Kansases and Syracuses and others that won their Iowa, that won their conference tournament, all knocked out in the first round. Of what I, you'd have to say, Billy, we're down to the last three games of the first week. This has been, there have been more twists and turns on this week than I can ever recall. Oh, I would agree. I would agree. And it just keeps talking about the balance in college basketball. Right? And, and what is really great about it is that Villanova's lead is six. Meanwhile, in Dallas, North Carolina State creeping back on the Longhorns of Texas. 32-28 is the score. Let's take you there live. In Texas, North Carolina State, a remarkable comeback down by 15. They've trimmed it to two. All on quickness and defense and Grant and Fells off the bench. Gibson straight away. Bitterman picks him up the screen by Williams, 15 on the shot clock. The freshman hits and free throws coming for Abrams. George Mason, a lot of people question how they got in and not Hofstra, which this makes you really respect Hofstra a whole lot more with what Mason has done knocking out North Carolina today. And then you got Wichita. They played earlier in the year, by the way. Yeah, that might have been the game that put George Mason in the tournament, to be quite honest with you. George Mason beat him 70 to 67. They'll meet, they'll meet in Washington, D.C., which George Mason will have uh, quite a following there. Here's that press has been causing some problems. And what makes it difficult is normally you can throw over the top of a press like this with smaller players, but Villanova is so quick that if you throw that lob high pass with their great ability to, to anticipate the pass, it makes it tough. Adams maybe got away with a walk. Big giant drop step or step forward and he hits the jumper. He was cold early in this one. He loves that mid-range jumper. He traveled. We were looking Our attention a week ago, we talked about it in the first game, but a lot of folks may not have seen it, but the Missouri Valley really come through with their performance this week. Doug Elgin, their commissioner, has to be one of the happiest guys in America right now. Great validation for Missouri Valley Conference and what they've done all year. And there's the lay-in by Marcus Williams. Freshman who's off to a terrific start in this ballgame. He's got 12 already, Billy. We're just 10 and a half into the game. Boy. Clark up high and held on. Crowd wanting a foul call. Rodinovich reaches in and comes away with it. They've got a break. 2-1 to Adams. Takes the other side for the basket. And that was a brilliant play by Shakur who did not charge on that play. That is so hard to do. Great play, and he's out to the Philadelphia crowd now. They're booing, but it was a great play on his part. Ray hits the shot, but Arizona is within one. Over the last 6.02, and the bench has played the factor. Gavin Grant and Courtney Fells, a sophomore and a freshman, have thrown down 12 for the Wolfpack. And they've done it out of fast break situations. If 
If Rick Barnes wants to keep ahead, there's the two players that you spoke of. They did a great job coming in off the bench, igniting the fast break. State was down. They were trying to execute in the half court. Couldn't do it. Aldridge and Tucker blocking shots and challenging inside, so they went to the break. It's got them right back in the game. Abrams will shoot the free throw. After the foul off the three. So a four-point play and now a six-point Texas lead. Texas led at one point by 15. There have been no ties and now three lead changes. That was early. And a whistle before the shot. That was a set play for Cameron Fetterman to post out of the timeout. They executed it well, but they're not going to get any free throws. The foul was early before he was shooting. Polino. I'm sorry, Craig. Herb Zendak, five straight years in the NCAA tournament. That was a second foul on Polino, and the threes hit from the corner as Bethel, his first shot made tonight. Abrams the other way, slides, hangs it off the glass and hits. How about the little freshman coming off the bench and helping out? Rick Barnes and the Longhorns. He weighs about 150 pounds. As we head to a minute left in the opening half. No help. Simmons is going to score, huh? Like to have that shot back as Aldrich takes the miss off the, off the rim. Gibson with the dribble. 53 ticks left on the first half clock. Texas by five. Polino. So there is your score as we approach halftime. Texas leading NC State by a score of 38 to 33. Well, it's the pinnacle of achievement in college basketball. The Naismith Trophy awarded to the game's top player. Time to announce the four finalists for this year's Naismith Trophy presented by Singular. Clark? That's right, Greg. This, this final four begins with UConn star forward Rudy Gay. Next is the nation's scoring leader, Gonzaga's Adam Morrison. Benjamin's the best guy here. He'll put it on the floor, Benjamin. Bethel will watch it up. Too long on the rebound to Texas. And with one pick left, the shot rattles off the back of the backboard. Ohio State after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular. Raising the bar. The Pack are back. At the half, 38 to 33, Texas, the two seed over the number 10 seeded Wolfpack of North Carolina State. It's a five point lead and we'll send you to New York in Great Gumbel after these messages and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. Welcome once again to our studios here in New York for Singular at the Half, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis, 26-23, Villanova leading Arizona. Let's go to Philadelphia. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Marcus Williams for Arizona with 12 of the 23, Foy with 12 of the 26 for Villanova in this Wildcat showdown. The winner advancing to Minneapolis in the regional. Jim, I don't see any slowdown out here in terms of fatigue setting in either. Here's Villanova for the first time showing a zone defense coming out of that timeout. 2-3 zone. There's Marcus Williams. Adams. Oh, what a job getting that shot off. That's the shot that he likes, though. He knows he's got such great elevation that when he goes inside that foul line, he doesn't mind going up even against bigger people. They had to wait and wait and wait, though. Well, if you've got that elevation, you get that double pump opportunity with the big guys off stride. Lowry just picking up his second before that last timeout. Kick out, but it went to Clark, who's not one of those three-point shooters. There's Foy on the drive between two Arizona players, and it's off Arizona. Foy wanted a foul on that, thought he got hit. Boy, does he have a quick first step. All-American guard and certainly deserves it. You know what, Jim? Really does. 
outstanding play. Here's another one, too. Both first team, all Big East. Some pass. Sheridan banks it home. Just had enough strength to keep that ball alive against the double team. Rodgers trying to screen against that back man on his own. Shane Clark shut off baseline. Shakur steps back for the three and drains it. The junior from right here in Philadelphia tying the game at 28. Coming home. Say, Shakur has been very good in these two games back in his hometown. He's just a 29% three-point shooter. He's got eight in this one after 17 Friday against Wisconsin. I think Villanova is uh, kind of surprised at how well Arizona can stay with this penetration, even with bigger people. Rodgers forced that steal, and he reached in, and it's off Villanova. Villanova normally breaks you down off that dribble, but Arizona doing a terrific job with their man-to-man -man defense straight up on the dribbler. Arizona playing in a hostile environment for a second straight year in the tournament, had to play at Chicago last year in the Elite Eight, and this is a turnover going back the other way off Shakur. That was a flop on Lowry. The ball got away from Shakur. Last year, a partisan Illinois crowd. Arizona had the face in the Elite Eight, and certainly Villanova with its huge following here today. Dylan comes back in for Arizona number 12. Is not going to be able to make that play out there. I mean, that was a bad foul by Dillon. Dillon reaching in on Clark. First on Dillon. And this Villanova team, a number one seed for the first time in school history with a 26 and 4 record. Only losses to West Virginia, Texas, Connecticut, and Pittsburgh. Boy. It's another one, that's a three. How is it possible? Foy left wide open, Adams asleep defensively. He's got 15 of the 31. Rogers. And that's Foy pulling it down, skying with that one. Foy gets by with a lot of palm, and he just did another one right there. This is uh, letting it go, there's another palm. It's been, there's another one. Boy, and, there, and there's another one of those. There's four turnovers by Boy, not called. And he hits the jump shot. Crowd rising to its feet. Six points by Foy in a 29 second stretch to break open a tie game. Adams almost lost it. They wanted a travel call here. Oh, look at Larry right in Shakur's face. Dillon is open for a three from the corner. Long board comes out to Cunningham. Cunningham and Clark have given Jay Wright some valuable minutes in this ball game. The Villanova team that shot only 33% its last two games. Is Foy feeling it or not? Oh, you know he is. Down and out with that one. Shakur, that one went right off of Sheridan's shoulder. And it belongs to Arizona with Marcus Williams coming back. Jim, Arizona has played a very good first half against all of this quickness. Letting it get away from them a little bit here. Trying to recover quickly with jump shots. That's not been the way they got into this ball game. And Jason Frazier returns for Villanova. Villanova pretty big back there now with Cunningham, Sheridan, and Frazier. People talk about all these guards, these four guards, but when they want to, they can... Uh, Change it around. Yeah, they've got some size in there now. And they go to the zone with this size. Oh, Williams drives beautifully. Oh, boy, that is a talented freshman right there. And if you're Jay Wright, that is a big breakdown in the 2-3 zone to allow a man to drive the baseline and set up the defense to force Arizona to have to shoot outside. Boy bouncing it in and stolen. Adams was the first to get a hand on it. Uncontested. 
Hassan Adams. Is that Williams again? He got his hand on a ball. Well, Freshman is having some half. I think it was Adams first who tapped it over in his direction. Then he broke. Boy spinning, firing at that time. Off Rodinovich, who's been quiet today after a very active Friday game. Timeout on the floor with 3.14 to go in the half, and another good one here in Philadelphia. From Lima, Ohio. He's only a sophomore and a foul. Ohio State fouls on number 40, Matt Sylvester. Matt Sylvester picks up his second. Only the first team foul for Ohio State here in the second half. And good decision by Thad Mata to open this half with the full court pressure, really taking Georgetown out of its rhythm. And the rhythm is to try to run this Princeton style, try to get the big fellas involved. Now, without Hibbert in the game, much more open offense. And a reach and foul on Butler. 15-53 to play in the second half. Nice Butler picks up his second. Back to Dayton after this. Arizona with a 22 to 8 scoring edge in the paint. Let's take a look at Power Aids. Power in the paint. Not much defense against that shot, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a lot of power in the paint unless you want to talk about the velocity with which that went through the hole. But they are winning the, uh, the battle inside right now. Well, that's not unusual. You're going up against a Villanova team because Villanova is going to beat you on the perimeter. The, the dribble penetration and the kickouts. And of course, Boy's having a great first half doing just that. He's got Rogers on him again. Tries to dish it inside. And an overrule here at first signal going the other way. But John Cowell overrules. He'll nice. stay with Villanova. Nice piece of officiating. The referee had a better angle. has been quiet, Jim, other than that first jumper to start the ball game. Yep, opened up with a three. Here's another reach-in call against the Wildcats of Arizona, Radinovich. He can't talk Wildcats today <laughs> without clarifying. And so you just go by Arizona and Nova. I'm wondering, has the tournament gone Hollywood? I was watching the Bradley-Pittsburgh game, Billy, and that, that little leaderboard, scoreboard, if you will, at the lower right of the screen said, said Brad Pitt. <laughs> so Villanova, Arizona, now a three-point game. 3.03 to play in the first half. Meanwhile, in Dayton, Ohio, Georgetown against Ohio State Park. Jonathan Wallace going to drive inside and find the big fella, Roy Hibbert. He's got 11.7 boards. He scores there. Georgetown up two. Ashanti Cook lays it in off the beautiful cut. 12-8 lead in OSU's Terrence Dials doing work inside. Buckeyes trail by four. Roy Hibbert already in double digits. Here he is making a sweet move for a big fella there from the foul line to the hoop. Then Jaquel Foster, one of three triples he knocked down in that first half. But right now, Georgetown by nine. And the winner of this game will meet the Florida Gators. It is now the pinnacle of achievement. Thanks for joining us here on Singular at the Half. We'll take a timeout and then send you back to the second half of your game after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. Adams is okay. They stopped the action just to see if he was okay, but they didn't call a foul. No, is that no harm, no foul? I guess, but I thought there was some harm. Gain no advantage. What if there is harm? That was some harm, no foul. Shakur, though. That one just uh, knocked down as Sheridan just stood in there. I like this move by Jay Wright. Going to the zone and saying to Arizona, all year long you've had problems from the perimeter. Let's see if you can do something today. And it really has helped them. Nice feed. Turn around, nice shot. Going over on a little run here after Arizona had pulled even. And a timeout, Lute Olson. Six unanswered. 40-32, Villanova. See, the thing about Georgetown, they make you play defense. You want to play defense? You like playing defense? Then you want to play against Georgetown Hoyas. 
of the John Thompson the third variety. And another jump shot going down, this time Green, a three-pointer. And that was just pure recognition of the fact that Dial's unwilling to come out on Green without Hibbert in the game. Dial's has the matchup on the more versatile Jeff Green. Inside Dial's, he's fouled from behind. Tonight on CBS America's number one network. So Lou Dolson tries to settle his team before the half. Don't let this thing get out of control. Well, here is Jay Wright doing another neat thing. He goes back to the full court pressure. Changing things around. He goes man to man. Real Meyer comes in for Arizona. He had a big game the other day and lands on his hands right there, 44. Marcus Williams fouled on the shot by Clark. And there was a case. Sheridan had that ball, Jim. Throw it down at the other basket. Don't throw it back towards the basket of your opponent. Be two at the line. You made a couple of references to the great man and one of my all-time favorites right there. Roly Massimino. He has come back. And the crowd cheers. They see him on the screen. Come on, Coach Bass. Give him a little smile. Yeah, he's got to be cool there. Hey, he's got a, uh, a big job on the way coming up. He's the director of basketball operations for both the men's and women's team, starting a program down in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida, at Northwood University, in charge of the Seahawks. There they're getting him now. 11 NCAA tournaments that man led Villanova to, and he only lost in the first round one time. He lost to LSU in 1990. He knew how to prepare a team. And fire up the team. Oh, yeah. Stomp on that sideline. I can still remember Lexington, Kentucky. And what it was like to play the perfect basketball game. Is Arizona coming away with it? After, uh... You know, I didn't realize that year they were the fourth seed in the Big East tournament. You always think of it, Georgetown, St. John's, and Villanova. But they were the fourth seed. Pitt was number three. Isn't that something? Yeah. And Pitt beat him in the last game of the regular yeah. season. Yeah. Badly. Yeah. Badly. Rodgers. Rudinovich. I think you'll see Jay Wright going back to the zone. And it was so effective. He just wanted to change up. And I thought he'd change up one time and get back into the zone because it was really effective. Going over now, they urge them from the bench. Let's move it up. Let's go, guys. Five seconds. Well, you got the ball in the hands of the right guy. Boy, up and in. That's a two. They close the half. You've got to feel pretty confident when that ball's in his hands. And Coach Mass sticks in a little pump fist. 42-35, Villanova at halftime. CBS Sports exclusive coverage continues after this message in a word from your local station.